Hey everyone. Welcome to Jim's EV Adventures. I'm Jim and we're going from point A to point B. Today we're going to do a deep dive into some of the most common objections that people have to owning EVs. Whether you're skeptical about cost, concerned about the longevity of the battery, or just curious. We're here to tackle five major objections head on. So let's get into it. So one of the biggest concerns people have about EVs is the traction battery. That's the big battery that drives the car. You've probably heard horror stories about battery replacement costing tens of thousands of dollars. And like the Ionic 5 a few months ago back up in Canada, the dealer actually quoted the entire cost of the car to replace the traction battery. Well, that's just horse malarkey. You have to go back to the uh, actual manufacturer to find out what the costs really are. And here's a couple of graphics to show you what I'm talking about. First, let's look at the failure rates. Uh, if you've ever done any statistical analysis, you know things about failure rates. And for example, in the aircraft, in the aviation industry, they practice what is called a Six Sigma. In other words, one in a million chances of a part, one part going bad on a, uh, an aircraft. Well, that same type of uh, technology has moved over into the EV production. The reality is EV battery failures are very rare. Studies have shown that the vast majority of EV batteries last between 8 and 15 years, often outlasting the vehicle itself. Manufacturers typically warrant a brand new EV battery or even one that is in a used vehicle out to 8 years and or 100,000 miles, with some automakers offering much more than eight years or 100,000 miles. That's comparable to, if not better than, warranties, all the warranties for internal combustion engines. You know, some people still like to argue the fact that this is easier than this. We well, have to go to a gas station to get this. And you sometimes have to go out of your way to do that. But now, I'm done fueling my car for the day. Nothing else to worry about. You know, while it's true EVs might have a higher sticker price, an apples to apples comparison of the models and the trims that are available today show that many EVs have reached price parity with their counterparts. Most people want to argue that point, but it's no longer arguable. That aside, what we may consider here is the total cost of ownership. One of the significant savings that comes from the absence of gasoline is you don't have to pay for a gallon of gas. While gas prices fluctuate up and down, the cost of electricity is generally stable and far cheaper. On average, an EV can save hundreds, if not thousands of dollars per year in fuel costs. For example, if you're paying $4 a gallon for gasoline and you drive 12,000 miles a year, you might spend between $1,200 and $1,500 on fuel annually. But charging an EV for that same distance only costs between $400 and $600, depending on the electricity rates in your area. And that's just fuel savings. Maintenance is another factor. EVs have far fewer moving parts than an internal combustion engine and no oil changes, fewer fluids, and less wear and tear on components that count like brakes due to regenerative braking. And over the course of a vehicle's life, these savings will add up significantly, especially when you start reaching 150 to 200,000 miles. I'm not gonna talk about the federal tax incentive and rebates that are still available, up to $7,500 in some states offering more because the cost of purchasing an EV is again, almost on price parity with an internal combustion engine car. Now, one of my favorite arguments is, hey, there's just not enough chargers when you're out on a road trip. Well, people do worry about that, and for very good reason. Up until recently, uh, Ford, Rivian, and General Motors now share the Tesla network. 
and that's extremely important. The U.S. now has over 180,000 public charging stations, and that number is growing rapidly. Federal funding, along with private investment, is expanding the charging network, and Tesla's supercharger network alone is vast enough to cross this country in most EVs today. Apps like PlugShare, ChargePoint, and many others make it very easy to find charging stations, and for most road trips, planning is the key but it's not much different than finding a gas station in a remote area. Many EVs now offer built-in trip planners that automatically map out your route and include the charging stops and will prepare your battery for charging. For longer trips, fast chargers can top off your charge within 30 minutes or less. In my Hyundai Ionic 5, we can go from 10 to 80% in about 20 minutes, which is plenty enough time to go grab a snack and go to the bathroom and stretch out a little bit before you get back out on the road. And yes, charging does take longer than filling up your gas tank, but for many people who like to plan their trips and take it easy along the route, an EV is ideal. The biggest savings in time for EV owners is not having to stop at a gas station every week or so. In fact, gasoline stops for the average ICE vehicle owner are 45 to 50 per year, and the average time is 8 to 12 minutes. So all I do when I get home is plug my car in and walk in the house. I don't have to go out of my way to a gas station. I don't have to make any pre-planned stops, and I definitely don't have to stand there and smell the nasty gasoline fumes while I'm filling my car. Another of the fun objections are, again, EVs cost too much. Again, I've addressed that already to a point, but the perception is EVs are simply too expensive, and that was true 10 years ago, even five years ago. And even now, luxury models can be pricey, like the Cadillac Lyric and uh, the top-end Tesla Model S and te top-end Tesla Model X. Those are pretty expensive cars but there are more affordable options entering the market every year. And as I've already alluded to, many EV models have already reached price parity. The price of a Model 3 standard range and a Toyota Camry are dead even at this point in time. And that's without government incentives. And speaking of incentives, many people complain that it's just not fair for EV owners to get incentives. Well, if you want to stop incentives for EV owners, then I'm good with that, just so long as you stop the incentives for the fossil fuel industries. And they've been getting those incentives since 1913. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you price or cost adjust the dollar for dollar over time, the oil industry has received over $25 trillion in adjusted dollars from the U.S. government since 1913, over 110 years. You might say they're responsible for the U.S. government's massive debt that is now over $30 trillion. And that's just an inconvenient fact that ICE enthusiasts don't want to hear, but it's the truth. Deal with it. Let's do talk about some of the more uh, cost competitive models that are out there, like my Chevrolet Bolt. You can buy a good used Bolt like mine now for $20,000 or less, and that's before incentives. The Nissan Leaf, this is the last year that they're building the LEAF, and those prices have come down substantially. Even the Hyundai Onyx 5, you can get for around $35,000. And these are priced competitively in the mid-range, the same as a gas-powered car. The starting price for most EVs now is between $30,000 and $40,000. The average price of a brand new vehicle in the United States across the board is $46,800. So let's talk about facts and compare apples to apples and stop blowing things out of proportion that are just simply not true. To close out this thought, if you do factor in government rebates, the lower cost of fuel, the less maintenance, over time, the total cost of ownership and the potential savings in that ownership can add up to tens of thousands of dollars, especially if you're gonna drive a vehicle between 150 and 200,000 miles which is what my wife and I do. We tend to drive our cars well over 150,000 miles. 
Lastly, one of the objections I hear quite often is that EVs weigh too much. Well, I've actually done a two to learn segment on the weight of electric vehicles, and I've shown that they're normally within 10 to 15% of the weight of a comparable car in the same class. But the fact that they're extremely heavy and they cause problems with the roads and they cause extra wear on the roads, that's just nonsense. Yes, the average EV weighs more than other cars in its class, but I don't see anybody complaining about the fact that a pickup truck weighs at least 2,000 and sometimes 4,000 pounds more than your average sedan, whether it be an EV or an ICE vehicle. One of the nice things about the weight of an EV is the lower center of gravity, which makes it handle much better. I would say probably three to five times better than any ICE vehicle in the same class. And you've probably heard that the extra weight also increases tire wear. Well, that's just nonsense as well. Rough and hard driving like I do increases tire wear. If you tend to get on the accelerator and spin off as you take off from a, an intersection, you're gonna wear your tires out more quickly. And the fun thing about an EV is you can do that all the way up to 40 miles an hour. Even that front drive vehicle sitting over my shoulder right now I can spin the wheels all the way to 35 miles an hour, all day long, seven days a week. Not a problem, but it tears up your tires. One of the other things is an EV tends to perform better in a crash test than the comparable ICE vehicle. That makes them more safe for the occupants. That's another important factor. And finally, 90% of all EVs that are sold in the United States today weigh less than a standard F-150. That's 90%. So this thing about weight, you can just throw that out with the bathwater because it's nonsense. Okay guys, so there you have it. Five myths completely debunked. The technology is evolving rapidly and things like this are becoming less relevant as EVs become more affordable, reliable, and accessible. And if you're thinking about make the making the switch to an EV, consider not just the upfront cost, but the total cost of ownership over time, whether that's three years under a lease or 10 years like I'm gonna have for the, this car and two other cars. The benefits are better for your wallet and they're better for the environment. Thanks for watching and keep driving electric and I'll see you on the road or somewhere out there along the route from point A to point B. Take it easy, everybody. See you all real soon. I would like to thank you very much for stopping by today. Please do remember to subscribe, share, comment, and like, and ring the notification bell so you'll know when we've uploaded something new. Remember, treat everyone with kindness, put a smile on your face, help someone today, and pay it forward when someone does the same for you. Again, thank you very much for stopping by today. We look forward to seeing you again in the very near future or somewhere along the route from point A to point B. Take it easy, everybody. See you all real soon.